Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week, but before we do so, let us start with a word of prayer. So in reverence to our Heavenly Father, our God, let us bow our head and let us pray. Blessed and wonderful Father, exalted King, the only true God, Yahweh, thank you for this new occasion that you're giving unto us to be found in your presence. We surround ourselves, body, soul, and spirit, mind, and heart, the air that is fed the heaven above us and around us and in us. Into your mighty hand, we surrender everything. And we humble ourselves, asking for your mercy, praying that you forgive us for whatever we may have done, said, or thought that did not honor or glorify you. For you said in your word that you did not hear the prayer of sinners. And we pray, therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you forgive us so that we can be in good standing with you, in good communion with you. Therefore, sanctify us and purify us with the water of purification and with your blood, body, soul, and spirit, mind, and heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth, anything that opposes itself against your word. We bind them and cast them into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you take us deeper and deeper into the understanding of your mystery contained in your word, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, we bless you, we appreciate you. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. So we will take a main passage of the Holy Scripture in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. So reading the word of God in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessel abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessel to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessel were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And they all stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and leave you and your children of the rest. May the Lord bless His word, may it come full of understanding, revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. So for this week, the Lord would like to speak to us about how to proclaim your deliverance. So the title of our teaching for the week is How to Proclaim Your Deliverance. In our main passage of the Holy Scriptures, we see a woman whose husband passed away, and she has two sons. This widow woman represents the church of God on earth, for the church is assimilated to a woman. And the husband, who was a prophet but passed away, represents Jesus Christ, who was also a prophet and died being crucified on the cross. And the two sons represent the two covenants or testaments, meaning the elder son represents believers in the Old Testament and the younger son represents believers in the New Testament, meaning the younger represent Christians. However, the kingdom of darkness is claiming things against the church. 
And this is portrayed by the fact that the creditor had come to take the two sons to be bondsmen. And this is also confirmed by the fact that Jesus Christ said to Peter that Satan desired to have you. In other words, Satan was claiming him. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, which says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, not to Peter, Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. In other terms, Satan was claiming Peter, but Peter is also a representation of the church of God. For Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, And I say unto you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, which means rock. Hence, by desiring to have Peter, Satan was actually claiming the church. Thus, our main passage of the Holy Scriptures of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, is indeed a prophecy of Jesus Christ who died for the church. And since Jesus Christ died being crucified on the cross, many Christians, meaning the church, are asking themselves the question, did Jesus Christ really die for them? Because Christians are still suffering with many things such as sicknesses, poverty, failure, and so on. Thus, the church is still seeing as children Christians living in bondage the same way this widow was suffering and was about to see her children being taken as bondsmen. Thus, Christians are rightfully asking themselves the question, why are they still suffering if truly Jesus Christ died and resurrected for them? For before he died, Jesus Christ said when he was on the cross in John chapter 19 verse 30, he said it is finished. Hence, Christians are asking themselves the, the question, if Jesus Christ has accomplished everything for them, why then are we still suffering with diverse sicknesses and diseases? Why are we, experience, are we still experiencing many of our needs being unsatisfied? Why are we still in so much trouble? And this was actually the state of mind of this widow woman as she went to see the man of God, the prophet Elisha. But the prophet Elisha asked her, What do you have in your house? That is to say that a true man of God is not worried about what has bewitched you or how many years you have been struggling but a true man of god want to know what you have at your disposal in your house and knowing that the house represent the church the widow woman replied that she has nothing except a pot of oil in other terms the widow woman was despising the pot of oil that she had the widow woman was mourning about a situation whereas she had the anointing in her house. The, in other terms, the widow woman was mourning about a late husband, about the, the, a late ha, the fact that the, a late husband has left her with many debts, whereas a late husband has left her with the oil in the house. This simply implies that the church is busy mourning about the suffering. Although Jesus Christ said everything was accomplished, but the church is ignoring that Jesus Christ has left the church with the oil. Meaning Jesus Christ has left the church with his anointing. However, the church is neglecting the anointing. Christians are therefore despising the oil meaning the anointing that Jesus Christ has left to his church. And they, kept, they keep on mourning about their sufferings. Whereas the word of God tells us that because of the anointing, you shall be protected for God's sake. In Psalm 105, verse 15, he said, Touch not my anointed. And again, 
Christians are mourning about their sicknesses and diseases, whereas the oil, meaning the anointing of God, is available in the church. And the book of James tells us that the sick shall be healed when he is anointed with oil. James chapter 5 verse 14 to 15 which says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray for him and anoint him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Hence, it is because Christians are neglecting the all that Jesus Christ has left to his church that they are no longer coming to church services in true local churches whereas the word, where the word of God is truly taught and preached. For they prefer to join churches where so-called men and women of God spend most of the time of the service prophesying on people and causing demons to manifest in people. And Jesus Christ clearly gave an indication of the danger of leaving the house of God through the following parable. In Luke chapter 10 verse 30 to 34 which says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him hence we can see through this parable that because the man left jerusalem where the house of god was he ended up being attacked and wounded by thieves and this is to say that when the, you leave a true church of god the protection of God will no longer be available over your life because the all of God is only available in the church of God. And this is why the word of God says in Psalm 133 verse 1 to 2, which says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren. In other words, the church, because the church is the gathering of believers, the gathering of the brethren, the gathering of the saints. He said, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious ointment in other words the precious oil the precious anointing upon the head that ran down upon the beard even aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garment this is indeed confirming that when true christians come together to fellowship the anointing of god will be poured upon the christian in the given gathering Hence, because this man had left Jerusalem, meaning he had left the house of God to go to Jericho, he was therefore no longer receiving the all of God. Hence, the word of God which says, Touch not my anointed, could no longer be applied to this man. And as a result, he was attacked and wounded by thieves. And this is why Jesus Christ said the following to his disciples. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, you have heard of me. In other words, by asking his disciples not to leave Jerusalem, Jerusalem where the temple of God was, in other words, the house of God, Jesus Christ was actually saying to Christians not to leave the church. By this statement, Jesus Christ was also implying that Christians should not leave true local churches where the true word of God is preached and taught. Because by leaving the church, they are actually getting away from the anointing of God. And this is the reason why many Christians keep on mourning about the many troubles that 
they are experiencing. And this also confirmed by the story of Jacob. For when Jacob was at Bethel, which means the house of God, God blessed Jacob without Jacob having to fight. And heavens were even opened over Jacob. Genesis chapter 28 verse 12 to 19, which says, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land where you lie. To you will I give it and to your seed, and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you, I, and I will keep you in all places where you go, and will bring you again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of you. And Jacob awoke out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and pour all upon the top of it to say that in the house of God, all can never lack. Verse 19, and he, he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. However, when Jacob left Bethel, meaning the house of God, and Jacob went to Peniel, this time, Jacob had to fight in order to be blessed by God. Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 to 30 which says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray you, your name. And he said, Wherefore is it that you do ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. This is therefore confirming that when you leave the church, the house of God, you will struggle in life. When you leave the house of God, where the anointing of God is available, you will struggle to be blessed. And this is done, and, and this is one of the main reasons many Christians are mourning about the struggles in life simply because they are living through local churches in order to follow so-called men and women of God who are actually thieves and this is well portrayed by the fact that this man was attracted and wounded by thieves and this is why Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy and we can notice that when the good Samaritan found the wounded man, he put oil and wine on the wound on the wounded man. And knowing that the wine is a representation of the covenant, for Jesus Christ said, he gave the cup of wine to the disciples. He said, take this, the cup of the New Testament, the New Covenant. The good Samaritan was actually restoring the wounded man into a covenant with God to remind the wounded man that he needed to remain faithful to God by remaining in the church so that the anointing of God always be available for him. And this is why the good Samaritan used 
oil. In other terms, the good Samaritan was reminding the wounded, the wounded man that as long as he remains in the house of God, he will never lack the anointing of God over his life so that he can be able to deal with whatsoever trouble that he may come that that may come on his way for the word of god says that in isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and the yoke shall be broken the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing i repeat the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing hence jesus christ has left to the church his oil meaning his anointing for this anointing is what he had and this is why jesus christ said in luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor so the anointing is there to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted so the anointing is there to heal those who are broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives is the anointing is available to de deliver the captives the recovering of sight to the blind so to give sight to the blind and to set he said to set at liberty then that are breathed so the anointing is available to uh, liberate those who are breathed and we know that a man can only give what he has and this is therefore the reason why Jesus Christ has left his anointing to his bride, the church. For the anointing is all that the church needs in order to break the yoke of bondage. And this is the reason why Peter said the following to the crippled man who was asking them money. Acts chapter 3 verse 6 to 8 which says, Then Peter said, silver and gold, I have known. So Peter, who means the church, the rock, who is the representation of the church. So the church say, silver and gold, I have known. But as I have give I unto you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So in the name of the anointing that Jesus has left me, I say, rise up and walk. And he took him by the, the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So because the Peter had the anointing, so who's the church? The church has the anointing, so the church was able to break the bondage of, of, of infirmity from that man. And that man entered the church. In other terms, he went to serve God. He became a new convert. Yes, as a Christian, you must not think that you are, you have nothing. Do not think that Jesus Christ has left you empty-handed as if he was an irresponsible father. No, but Jesus Christ has left you with his oil. Jesus Christ has left you with his anointing. And this is the all of consecration. For the all was mainly used in the Old Testament for consecrating people or things. For instance, God asked Moses to take the anointing of the anointing all to consecrate the tabernacle and everything in it. Exodus chapter 40, verse 9. God also instructed Moses to consecrate Aaron and his sons as priests with the anointing, with the anointing all. Exodus chapter 28, verse 41. God also instructed the prophet to take all and anoint David as king. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Thus, when you ask a true man of God to pray for you, he should, you should, he, he should first ask you how much all you have in your house. In other terms, the man of God should look at how much you are consecrated into the things of God in your local church. Meaning, how much you are dedicated into the affairs of God. For if there is no all, the man of God can do nothing for you. In other terms, the all is a representation of your dedication into serving God. And you need to understand that being consecrated in the things of God 
does not necessarily mean that you must be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher of the word of God. For the same way there are various parts in the human body, so are also various so there are also various members in the body of Christ. And the same way every member of the human body plays his own unique role, so also every member of the body of Christ has his unique function. Hence, you should not think that because you are not well seen like the pastor of your church, that you should not serve God with much dedication. For if you look at the human body, the heart is not seen like other members of the human body. However, without the heart, the whole, body, the whole human body is dead. Hence, the heart is a vital part of the human body. And it is for this reason that the heart is hidden inside the chest so that it can be protected. Thus, God may have also caused you to have a ministry where you are not seen by people. And yet, your role in the local church may be vital to the proper running of your local church. For instance, you may not be leading the intercession service of your local church, but your everyday intercession for your pastor may be the reason your pastor is very strong in his ministry. Hence, your role in your local church is essential. And this is why when certain church members stop playing their role in their respective local church, we usually see the impact of the local church degrading in the community or even in the city or nationwide. Hence, you need to be consecrated unto serving God for your miracle to occur. You need to be fully committed into serving God in order for your miracle to take place. And this is why, and this is why, while performing his first miracle, Jesus Christ asked the servant to fill the vessel, in other words, the water pot, to the brim, even as described in the book of John. John chapter 2, verse 7 to 11, which says, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was. But the servant which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good one until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. This is therefore to say that your level of consecration into serving God does matter when it comes to experiencing your miracle. For your level of consecration into serving God expresses the level of all you have available. I repeat, your level of consecration into serving God expresses the level of all you have available. In other terms, the level of anointing you have available. Thus, a good man of God will first ask, he will first try to determine the level of your commitment when it comes to serving God in your local church before he can pray for you. And this is what is implied by the question of the prophet Elisha. What do you have in your house? In order for the oil to flow in a local church, there needs to be empty vessels. In other terms, God needs God need new converts ready to be used by God in order for God to pour his anointing upon upon them and in order for a local church to have empty vessel you need to go evangelize to the people in the neighboring houses 
so that they can receive Jesus Christ as the Savior Lord and then be converted and they will avail themselves to be used by God. And this is why the prophet Elisha instructed the widow woman to go to borrow empty vessel from her neighbors for God needs empty vessel to fill. In other terms, God needs new converts who will avail themselves to be used by God by forsaking the sinful ways of life. Even as the word of God tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, which says, If a man therefore purges himself from this, in other words, if he get away from sin, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. You therefore need to go fetch those empty vessels and bring them into the house of God, meaning in the local church. And this is why the book of Romans tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 15, which says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And this, and it is for this reason, Jesus Christ has sent us by saying, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believes not shall be damned. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Jesus had to say, Go ye therefore and preach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The prophet Elisha also instructed the widow woman, once she would have obtained the empty vessels, that she should enter into a house and closes the door behind her and this is to say that as a local church we need to be autonomous and this is also why jesus christ said the following in matthew chapter 6 verse 6 he said but you when you pray enter into your closet and when you have shut the door your door pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly you must learn therefore not to depend on men or women of god but christians need to learn to pray for themselves you need therefore to learn to trust god fully when you pray you need to be fully convinced that god your heavenly father will surely answer you when you pray unto him in the name of jesus christ even as Jesus Christ stated in John chapter 16, verse 23, by saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And we can also notice that the more empty vessels were available, the more the oil was available. In other terms, as long as there were they are new convert, as long as there are new convert in the local church who avail themselves to serve God. The anointing of God will continue to flow in the local church. This also implies that the more there are Christians in the local church committed to serve God, the more God will pour his anointing in the local church. And this is also well portrayed by the story of the prophet Elijah and the Shunammite woman. For as long as she was willing to host and feed the servant of God, the prophet Elijah, the barrel of meal and the cruise of oil will not finish. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13 to 14, which says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for you and for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, 
neither shall the cruise of all fail until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. This is therefore telling us that as long as you will continue to serve God, the anointing of God will continue to flow over your life. And once all the vessels were full with oil, the prophet Elisha finally instructed the widow woman to go and sell the oil and then pay a debt. And then pay what? A debt. This is revealing unto us that we need to use the anointing that Jesus Christ has given us in order to cancel all the reclamation that the kingdom of darkness is having against your life and against your family for god said that the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing hence in the name of jesus christ and through the anointing of the holy spirit cancel all the reclamation that the kingdom of darkness is having against your health cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against your marriage Cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against your finances. Cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against your children and so on. And this is why we want to pray to say, Thank you, Abba Father, Yahweh, for this understanding of your word imparted onto my life. Thank you for blessing me with the revelation of your word. And I pray, Heavenly Father, asking you to forgive me for any time i have been mourning about the challenges i'm facing in my life whereas you have left me with your anointing i thus take this opportunity to use this anointing that you have put upon my life to deal with any reclamation that the kingdom of darkness has against my life hence by the anointing of the holy spirit I cancel any reclamation that the kingdom of darkness is having against my Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against my marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against my finances in the and my businesses in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel any reclamation the kingdom of darkness is having against my children and my family in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, glorious Father, asking you to help me, making sure that I always find myself in a true local church, fellowshipping with genuine Christians, and that I am always fully devoted in serving you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength, always bringing new converts into your house so that your anointing never ceases flowing in your local church in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering me accordingly. May you be forever lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.